Okay, let's call it meeting to order. All right, bang your gavel. 1806. 1806. Uh, September 17th, 2020. Yeah, that. Casey, are we live? Yes. Okay. You are being recorded. Um, can we have a motion for the minutes of the last meeting? Motion. And a second. Any I'll discussion? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, Carolyn. Aye. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Unanimous. Great. Uh, how, would the how about the report? draft report? All right. So last meeting was a few months ago, so we're just going to kind of rattle off some of the updates. Nothing pressing, nothing crazy. We're just kind of back to status quo. Um, we had our dip in call volume, kind of like right when COVID started hitting, and it's come back up. Last month was 101 calls, which... Um, is right back up there with our kind of historical new averages. So we'll see if we continue there. You definitely see the dip around April and it just started back up again. So I think we're beyond that. Um, we'll keep an eye on it, obviously. No unprotected exposures from COVID uh, experienced by our staff. We've been using universal precautions and PPE for every patient. Um, we're currently doing fine on PPE. Um, we just did a count yesterday and we should be all set for the time being. Uh, if we see a spike come this flu season, we'll keep an eye on that. But as of right now, uh, we're all right. Uh, uh, Zach, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, when you say you're all right, like how far ahead are you? Uh, what? <laughs> 12, 16 weeks at least, maybe more. Uh, okay. We might even be as many as like 24, 36 weeks the way, the way that we're going. So, um, okay. All right. I, I'm going to do, you. yeah, I'm going to have, so we're okay. The last time I did a count was about a month ago. I'm going to do another count in a week just to see how much it's gone down in a week. And that'll give me an idea about how many weeks we have. I, I think, at the current rate, we're, we're doing fine. We're, we're really doing okay. I, I would prefer that you uh, try to, you know, stockpile as much as necessary, as you feel is necessary, okay? Yeah, when, when things first happened, we got a lot of donations from the D8 and Eagle Brook parents. And so those, those are still sitting in our bay, a lot of surgical masks, a lot of N95s, a lot of gowns. So. That, that's, that's why we're doing so well, because we got those donations early on. Um, let's see. We did get a, um, I called it a PPP grant. I think technically it's called a CARES Act stimulus um, grant from the feds uh, for $9,561. They're really strict about what we can and can't use that money for. Um, so uh, basically it's gotta be something that we weren't otherwise budgeted for. So that's gonna be like the UV disinfectant lights. I talked about reusable respirators for our full time and our active per diem. So instead of having to use an N95 every time and disposing of it, it's just the cartridge. Um, both of those things are hard to come by and they actually are coming from different channels than we normally use. So it's just a matter of trying to find them and not get price gouged on it. So looking at state avenues for bids on those things and, and making sure that we can get our hands on that. Good, good, good. Uh, let's see, emergency dispensing site is the drive through flu clinic is coming up um, on, let's see, October or whatever it was? Fourth. It's Fourth. October 4th, Fourth. Thank but also you. it's also September 30th at the Senior Center. Yep, so South County EMS, we will be there on both days uh, to 
provide support and emergency medical care if need be or what other staffing uh, needs we might have um, and as well as Conway EMS. So I did reach out to Gemma. Uh, she is aware and she will send uh, people down as well for the uh, regional EDS uh, on October. Where's the uh, October in hold? Say Sorry. that again. Where's the October one being held? October 4th, it's at the Deerfield Highway Department on Merrigan Way, 10 to four, Carolyn, I think. No, 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 10 to one. Oh, geez, 10 to one. Yeah. Um, we are requesting pre-registration for that, I believe, uh, just yes. to be uh, expedient no, no. on that. Right, and we want our volunteers to show up around nine o'clock because we try to open early, maybe 9.30ish we'll open, um, hopefully. Um, we're, we're not doing it at the um, Sunderland Safety Complex. We haven't uh, finished developing that plan because I don't want to invest too much time and energy if we don't have any COVID vaccine in the wintertime. Because what will happen if, if it's springtime or later, we're, we're going to go and um, do it back at Yankee Candle because that's a safer venue to be spread out, you know, physically spread out. But if we do happen to get COVID vaccine in the winter time, we want to um, have at least one spot. And then if how, depending on how it comes, I mean, we're thinking it's going to dribble in like it did for the H1N1. So, you know, we'll just try to do it at the highway garage if it comes in in the winter. But if we get a massive amount, we're going to finish developing the um, safety complex plan down in Sunderland and what we'll do is we'll split um, you know the two locations and I'm, I'm not sure how you know I'm not sure if we're going to run it simultaneously or you know we're just we had when we had the H1N1 Tommy as you remember we had like I think we had um, 14 or 16 I can't remember clinics you know flu clinics they were like rolling flu clinics because we were only getting 10 I mean, 100 to 200 doses at a time. So I, don't, I have no idea what this is going to be like. So we're just, we're just trying to be as flexible as possible, have as many options as possible, get people, rev up our, um, have some exposure with our, um, you know, with our new volunteers. We have a core group that have been, had done it in the past, but we also have a brand new bunch, which is wonderful, younger. And um, so we're hoping to do this on the fourth, and then we'll see see what happens. You know what? How how the vaccine rolls out. Great. Um, let's see. The um, oh, uh, Dr. Sam Broder, paramedic, who is a member of our department, um, has also been working as the assistant emergency medical director for Franklin County um, and Bay State Health has applied or they're in the process of designing and applying for a emergency medical director fellowship. So for new physicians who are in their residency who want to specialize in pre-hospital and disaster medicine, they can uh, participate in that fellowship. And so we've um, agreed to host their fellows in the future a year or two from now if their program comes off the ground. And basically it just means that um, we would be one of their field locations for their physicians to see what EMS is like, um, see what a high performing crew does in the field. And um, our responsibility is basically to give them the roof and the chair and their responsibility back is to provide ongoing feedback and continuous quality improvement. Um, so it's really, it's not just a win-win. I think it's a win-win for us and a win for them. So. Uh, looking forward, hoping that will come to fruition uh, next year, probably at the earliest. Do we have Do we have any liability off the top of your head on this? No, because they're they are still um, they're Bay State Health employees the whole time. They are physicians with their own license and their own uh, malpractice. Um, so it's it's totally different. Um, but, so no, no li liability for us on that. All right. Uh, our annual OEMS inspection that normally happens in uh, June was postponed for COVID indefinitely. We got a 
indefinite extension from the state. And now my understanding is that they're just going to um, go a whole year uh, without our annual inspection. We'll pick it up again next year. Paramedic level services are typically inspected every year. Um, high performing basic level services can you know, go as many as two years in between inspections. Uh, so this to me just says that they trust us. We're doing a good job. Our inspections always go well. And so they say, you know, we're not going to get to you this year. We know you're doing fine uh, and they're going to come back around. So um, our license is in good standing and uh, there's no restrictions as far as that goes. Good. Uh, let's see. Um, I only mention this not because it actually changes anything about what's going on, but only because it might have been some scuttlebutt in the county. Um, normally, so we provide mutual aid services to any community uh, in our area that runs out of ambulances and needs additional help, just like they provide it back. That's normal. No changes there. Our intercepts, where we provide a paramedic to a basic level service um, since we became paramedic has always been we will provide that if we have the availability to meaning that if we leave town on that intercept we still have a paramedic left in town for our uh, citizens so pragmatically or practically speaking rather that's norm monday through friday uh, while we have the additional impact shifts on and i'm here uh, normally how that would work is if a community requested an intercept from Shelburne Control, they would go down the list. If it got to us, they would call here and ask if we were available and we would say yes or no. Just recently, um, we heard from Shelburne Control that that's not something that they have the capacity to do any longer, that they can't call down and ask whether we're available. So it has the effect of just we won't be doing intercepts because they won't be asking if we are available for them. Uh, historically, we've done you know, one or two intercepts a month. Um, most months this year has been zero just because of COVID. We've been keeping all of our crews locally and reducing their exposure. So as I said, it really doesn't affect us as far as operation goes. It's just that because Shopper Control has changed their uh, position on it. It created some friction at the Franklin County EMS committee level. Um, and so our representatives from the Franklin County EMS committee to Shelburne Control are bringing up with Shelburne Control uh, why, why the change kind of out of the blue. So um, I sit on Shelburne Control, Zach, so I'll bring it up. If, if yeah, and, and I think it's more... Um, it's not an issue for me or for South County, but I think it has wider implications for the county as a whole if all of a sudden control can't yeah. do this. And so some of the other departments um, that are the representatives to that Shelburne Control Committee are making it a point to bring it up because they feel it's a more of an issue for them than it is for us. So yeah, but you can I don't understand. Yeah, but I had no notification of why that would have changed. That's kind of a weird thing. Yeah, well, and I, it, it came out of, there were three days in a row in which they just toned us out for an intercept without asking us first if we were available. And so I reached out to Butch and said, hey, you know, we have this procedure, this policy that I thought was understood. I just want to touch base on that. And his response was that um, they can't call. So I don't know if it was him, um, I, I don't know. Um, yeah. being put on the spot with that. But like I said, it doesn't affect us really um, practically, but uh, you may hear grumblings of it from, from some yeah, other Yeah, but people. that could, you know, that could potentially be $20,000 worth of revenue that we just lost. I, I don't, you know, we were never doing that many intercepts anyway. Um, yeah, I think just this entire year, um, nine, 11 intercepts. Uh, last year, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 intercepts, you know, like the whole year. Um, so it's really not, um, this isn't going to, we're not going to feel this in the budget. And it's not something that we factor in when I uh, estimate our billing revenue anyway. So um, do with it what you will, but. That's that. Um, let's see. 
And I only mentioned this, uh, uh, this last thing because I put it in the agenda because I thought I was actually going to have some information on this, but I don't. Um, but basically, Massachusetts firefighters and police officers don't follow fall under workman's comp. So they have their own chapter and section in the law that kind of provides that. Um, EMS does fall under workman's comp. There is a sister law that a town could adopt that mirrors the fire and police workman's comp law for EMS. It was brought to my attention recently. There was a question about, um, you know, as far as the benefits go, what does this mean? Why would somebody adopt this? Is it something that makes sense? Uh, basically, it's a big can of worms. I don't know anything about it. Um, and I know the MMA has like a, a very brief kind of no answer position on, um, on that chapter and section. Uh, I'm only mentioning it here because I put it on the agenda before I was really ready to even bring it up if I thought it needed to be brought up. Um, but that's, that's that. <laughs> and well, we could do some research, but poor Casey. Casey in your uh, spare time, Casey, could you look into that, please? <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Since we aren't meeting every month. My copious spare time. <laughs> Kate, Since hey, we Casey, aren't meeting every Casey, month, she might be able to get on, it. So we can see your facial expressions right now. <laughs> for, our, for our next meeting, I think is in November. She might be able to do it by November, but... <laughs> Um, if there's a movement, okay, so it's similar to IOD insurance? It's basically, uh, so the chapter and section is 111F for firefighters and police. Yep. It's 100% uh, it's of your pay uh, while you're incapacitated until you come back. Uh, workman's comp is 60% of your pay right. until you come back. Um, but obviously, there's like some reasons why workman's comp is better than 111M, which is F. the EMS statute. Okay, and so it's 111M. Okay. Yep. And, and if the municipality adopts 111M, then it's up to the employee at the time of the injury to decide whether they want to invoke 111M or workman's comp. This is, this is the thing, like it's getting, it gets yeah. a little murky. Complicated. And, yeah. And MMA just says, if your community has adopted 111M, we instruct mayors and town administrators to familiarize themselves with the blah, 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 blah. Um, so I don't know. I, it was brought up. It's, um, yeah. Um, it, it so IOD insurance has a pretty big um, ask on the part of the towns. The right. coverage itself costs a lot. Um, and it's, it's until the person dies, essentially. I've seen towns go almost bankrupt because of 111F. So right. I would be cautious about figuring out what the ramifications – no dis, you know, no disrespect, yeah, yeah, yeah. Zach, but I would be cautious no, about no, what the ramifications are for the town. I want to be really clear that, like, I don't, this okay. is just, it was brought to my attention. Um, as far as our department goes, we have a very good track record in that we don't have a lot of injuries on duty. I think we've had one instance in our existence in which somebody was out more than three days because of an injury. And it was a total of, like, seven days or eight days um, mm -hmm. And so this is really like one of those, like, what if big things were not a major fire department running, you know, with 50 employees or anything. So I, I don't know. I do know the reason it was brought up to me is because uh, it was mentioned as basically a bargaining disadvantage we have when compared to somebody choosing us versus a, like a fire department job because because they, they have 111F, yeah. Right. I, um, you know what I would like to do if, if what we could do is put money in the OPEB. And if we had a loss, then I would say we could structure the OPEB contribution so that we could pull it out of OPEB to make up the difference between 60 and 100% so that we're not paying up front because mm -hmm. we have a better track record and that way we're providing the coverage if necessary, but because we have a better track record, we're not paying the huge amount of money. I mean, it's more like self-insurance and self, you know, retaining the risk ourselves. And I, I feel like, you know, similar to, you know, Kevin is very um, strict on, you know, OSHA regulations and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I, I would rather take the risk on 
our own self insurance somehow rather that's than a, that that's a very risky thing and i think it was grafton that ended up having several overrides because of a 111 f claim that's my caution yeah well no that's what i meant i i would like us to just say that we have the potential as a you know a committee. yeah but we may not that's the problem we may not have the money to cover a claim like that. So let me do some research. What I can do yeah. is maybe send it to you, Zach. Well, and, yeah, and you can I, forward it to everybody. Yeah, I, but I see, think... see if we can, when we make an um, OPEB contribution to the OPEB account, just like we, we remember we had said we were trying to convince the finance committee, Casey, to do a higher contribution to the OPEB account, and that if we were ever short, we had bad year, we could use some of the money out of that to pay the you know the retirement amount that we already pay so that's how we got them to increase it so if we were making up an OPEB contribution maybe we could use it towards you know use language that we could use it towards the difference between 60 percent of your pay and 100 percent of your pay without having you know offer the benefit or you know be considerate of the possibility or or well, the question is, is, does OPEB cover something like that? Because it may not be an other post-employment benefit. In other words, the person may not be gone. Yeah, right. so I think by right. definition, they're still employed. It. No, yeah. no, no, right. no, no. They would still be an employee, but we could use it towards, you know, that we could structure the language to use it as, as towards that if we had that risk. Yeah, I think I, for me, at least, there's still so many questions that like, I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. And my position was basically just, yeah, like, if this is an option for us to adopt, why would we choose to or why would we choose not to? And just to right. kind of understand what those look like and have an yeah, answer right. for why, for why right. we take the position we are. Right. But I, what I was thinking of is if when Casey's in the if she had this in the back of her mind, maybe we could structure the benefits somehow without taking Yeah, but I don't know if, the tr if those trust allowances will let, will let us do that okay. if the person's still employed. That's my question. Yeah, so no, I understand. I a note. That's yeah, but just question. look into it because I, I'm not too excited about this to tell you the truth. This is just, you know, we do have good benefits and I don't know. It's just one more thing for us to have to pay up front. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we need more information. And I and I would say that first the towns have to vote to the town have to vote it to accept it. So I don't think it'd be an easily acceptable thing if it's going to. So why are we talking about it right now? I, I, I mean, I, I don't. On, on, on to, you know, that that let, let Casey do some research and bring us back, and it's something that yeah. we think is a good idea. Of bring it forward. But if it's not, we're, we're, we can't worry about something that we can't worry about. Yeah, okay. Right I now. Just, I just was concerned that. Carol, it didn't happen yet. Don't. Yeah, I know. We got other things to worry about. What else you got there, Mr. Smith? Uh, that is it for me. That's the bottom of my director's report. Um, so if there's anything else, any new news, anything un- well, I just want to say Zach has been really wonderful about contributing to the EDS discussions and he's going to um, do training next Tuesday for our volunteers on Zoom on proper use of PPE and um, help um, with, you know, the whole train, you know, just in time training because we're not going to have pizza and get people together. It's not going to be social. It's going to go on Zoom and all that kind of stuff. And Casey and Jen have been wonderful. They're going to, you know, run the meeting. So everybody gets to see everybody. Oh, no, maybe we'll let Zach run the meeting. <laughs> no, i got to have Zach talk. So I just wanted to say that Zach has been really um, supportive of this whole um, EDS process. And um, it's wonderful. And, and it's wonderful to have our e EMS service come to our... Um, you know, clinics and participate. It's good. How's it? Right. Uh, how's the new ambulance working up? Oh, it's going. It's awesome. It's great. Good. Both both frontline trucks work and are the same. And oh yeah, 
it's a it's uh it's like a whole new world over here. So what are you no. doing with all what are you doing with all your spare time now that you don't have to chase the breakdowns? Oh yeah, no, I've got gobs of free time now. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Casey, you hear that? <laughs> I was just gonna say no, no. Uh, you breakdown. have gobs, boy. Have I got things you can do? My yeah, I was friend. gonna say no, no global pandemic or healthcare crisis or anything. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Um, I've got the next scheduled meeting for November tenth, um, and I think it probably means that I'm already in budget season. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you just haven't gotten the memo yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, so I have it. Is really what I want to focus on first. No, November tenth is a t is Tuesday. I have it on the nineteenth, November nineteenth. Great. I will. Uh, you better I'll check. Wait. So, so Zach, I, I got a question for Zach. Zach, one of the things. Um, I've been reading in some of the things that happened is a police telling EMS crews, paramedics to use ketamine. 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 Does that happen to you? Um, we, so we do carry ketamine, but we do not take orders or directions from anybody about how much or when to administer. That is a clinical judgment so, on our provider's part. So, so, so the, the, would that be, would you call in? and ask the, the medical staff, is that how, is that how you do? We, we have some standing orders that under certain circumstances, we can administer a, a, a certain dose based on the patient to achieve a certain effect. Yeah. Um, if it's outside of that range, then yeah, we would call a, our online medical control in the emergency room, give them the situation that we're dealing with, ask for a specific dose, and they either say yes or no on that. Okay, thank you. What, is it, what does it do? It's a, a ketamine is a AJ. What class drug is ketamine? I thought that was a horse sedative. Um, yeah. So, so basically, it's it's a it's a painkiller, but it has disassociative qualities for it. Um, we used it in a very successful. Um, it was a child who was trapped in the rocks in the river up in Conway. Um, we actually called for orders from the medical control physician, and we chose ketamine specifically because of the disassociative effect. And by giving him the correct dose of ketamine, he remained awake, but because he was disassociated, we were able to free him from the rock. We weren't able to do it up until then. So under certain circumstances, ketamine is the drug of choice. If we're just dealing with like pain, you know, we have morphine and fentanyl. Um, it's it, it, they're just puzzle pieces. So that's, that's why you would use ketamine um, or not use ketamine. So sometimes, sometimes, Carolyn, it's used in hospitals as a anesthesiologist, uh, use it all the time. Um, and sometimes they've been in some of the inner city departments, they use it as if someone's being combative or they can't, they, the police will tell the the uh, responding crews to utilize ketamine. And it, it, it's, there's a lot of stuff that goes on with, it, with its use, let's put it that way. I, I have uh, full faith in our South County EMS providers that we use our medications yeah. smartly and within our protocols. Um, so I am a, yeah, I'm aware of that incident elsewhere in the country um, and I'm, confident that South County would not put ourselves in that type of position. Thank you. Anything else for Zach or? Carolyn's anything? right, November 19th. Hey, I already had it marked down. <laughs> Thanks, not Carolyn. often I get to see all you guys. <laughs> so so, so one, one of the things I just wanted, I, I know there, there, we had gotten an email about um, using the van that was donated by Hatfield as a, as a transport. Um, I, I would hope that our top priorities get the van for the senior center. Um, and um, if we somehow can't put together a plan for the senior center, 
we would then in turn take the van and redonate it to another senior center that could use it. I, I mean, I think if we want to do transports, that's something that we should discuss and and make that commitment to doing that, not use a van with 70,000 miles on it, I guess. that That's a, the only thing I would say. Uh, yeah, and um, I doing a doing those types of transports and expecting to bill for it opens a can of worms as far as contracts and, and things like that. Um, well, and, and, and one thing I, 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 I would be careful and, and, and Casey would probably have to do more or, or one of one of our TAs would have to do a little more work is that when you put a government um, run body up against private entity, they can claim that there, you have an unfair competitive advantage because you're taxpayer funded because you're taxpayer funded yeah and and i know and i know that we that that's a problem in when you generate power and it's also when you know when we were when i was doing uh coast guard patrols the boat us would say well you guys are doing it for nothing i can't do it for nothing so i i just think there, there's probably more said to that than just oh yeah we're going to start doing transports I think. Yeah, um, I don't disagree. Anything else? Entertain a motion. I make motion. a motion. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, Aye Carolyn. Aye.